Welcome to Political Insight on VOS TV, where we'll talk about intriguing political issues happening around the globe. Today, we're going to be focusing mainly on Edo State. I'm your host, Obishay Tracy, and today we have a special guest in the studio here with us. Please introduce yourself. And good morning. I'm Louis Ujosase. Okay, it's a pleasure having you here, sir. The pleasure is all mine. So, moving forward, firstly, we're going to be looking at the achievement of Obaseki so far. What can you say about the investment of your Simo Power Company? Well, uh, the investment of the Osimo power plant, it's a good one. The idea behind it, it's a very beautiful idea, but it's a total failure. Wow. <laughs> a big total failure to me. The reason is, uh, you see, when the government started this, he made an announcement that the good people of Edo states will no longer suffer electricity. We will have light 24-7. He made that as a campaign that he was going to do that. Uh, fast forward four years later on, the people of Edo State are still struggling, still suffering power shortage. See, some places in Benin City, some communities have not seen light for about eight months, eleven months, wow. a year plus, and uh, and it is very very bad. It's very very bad very. for you to compare with something like this. You ought to fulfill your promises to the people. How then do you do you expect the people to have you in high regard if things are not met? You see, the uh, Osimo Power Plant, um, it's under the DISCO. You see, since the federal government said it is going to stop a uh, subsidy to DISCO companies, and uh, the Bed Sea is under this DISCO company, they are not evacuating the 7,000 megawatts they ought to what, evacuate to the good people of Edo State. They are producing about 3,000 megawatts, which is wrong, which is totally wrong. How do you expect the good people of Edo State to be happy? We are suffering electricity big time. It is not right. And that is really one bad thing whereby these politicians always come out to campaign and say, oh, if you vote for me, I do this, I do that. And after entering power, they fail to do this. Well, let's move forward. So now looking at the educational system in the two states, what can you say about um, the government? How have they improved in that aspect? Well, to me, it is laughable. It is a big joke. And it's, uh, it's in big nonsense, a big slap to the face of the government. Looking at the educational system, it has really crumbled. It has crumbled. You see, uh, you go to communities, you will find out that uh, education there is zero. You see, buildings have collapsed. Government ought to provide the basic amenities for the people. What is the basic amenities? Good road. You have water, you have electricity, you have uh, uh, healthcare centers. None of these have been met. Take, for instance, the University of Edo State, a woman. Uh, I believe people who went to that school would cry out loud right now when they get to understand that the school fees right now, it is no longer, in fact, what, how much are they paying the uh, minimum wage? 33,000 naira. Okay. Now, the son of a layman can no longer send his or her child to school. the school to go and study. Okay. Imagine you want to send your son to go and study medicine in the University of uh, 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 Epoma, that's AAU. How much for school fees? They'll tell you about 200 and something thousand naira. How much do they earn? It is appalling. Government needs to look at this. You see, there's a, a, a government school close to my place in Ewotubo. When you get there, you see the buildings there. In fact, you will weep. You will weep profusely because these buildings, they are dilapidated. There is no chairs. Children walk with their bare foot. In fact, when you get there, the teachers are not even qualified. Mm. If you look at the past government, the, 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 in fact, uh, Comrade Adams Ali Oshomole, he did a lot for this state when it comes to educational system. He, he built different schools, provided uh, chairs, gave them good uh, boards. In fact, he employed good teachers. What, what do we have today? Nothing. Those buildings are no longer... In fact, this current uh, government, government have not done anything for educational system, to say the least. They've not. And the most annoying part is that education is a key factor. It's impossible where you don't have conducive um, environment for students to learn mm -hmm. and all of that, which also leads to insecurity, which I want you to dissect to us. What can you say about the insecurity level in Edo State? See, insecurity is laughable in this state. It is appalling. You see, uh, for a state as large as this, we ought not to face security challenges anymore. You see, uh, uh, February 22, if I'm not mistaken, when PDP did their uh, primaries yes. in a stadium, 
uh, a lot of persons confessed when they saw the magnitude of people that were standing outside. The, in fact, the magnitude of politicians, uh, sorry, I, I mean the magnitude of uh, uh, security personnel that were outside, for what? For just what? Political rally, for a political party's primary elections. Now, insecurity in those states, it's, it's a big fact. Yeah, in fact, I can't just put words together because people are weeping day after day. Because you, 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 you are at home today, you leave your things in the night, you see people breaking into your houses, stealing. A whole lot of things are happening. The government is not even doing anything about this. They said they are training about 1,500 persons, vigilantes, to checkmate these mm -hmm. things. How will they checkmate this if there is no mobility? Government is not providing anything at all to checkmate these things. You see, I, I was a victim of this some weeks ago. I was at home in the morning. I, I, I went out to go check some certain things. I locked the door. Unfortunately for me, I came back just to meet my window, Borgood. Thieves came into the house. And there are vigilantes in the neighborhood. I reported the issue. They said government is not providing the necessary means mm -hmm. for them yes. to checkmate these things. How do we live as what citizens in the states? It's not even safe. It's no longer safe. Before they say you sleep with your two eyes closed. Or now you sleep with one eye one open. open. <laughs> but now we no longer sleep. Our two eyes are open because we don't know what will happen. You might be sleeping in the house the next day. The, in fact, the next you minute you move yourself somewhere else. <laughs> this is what we're facing in the states. Very true. Security, it's in fact, like I said earlier, when I said, uh, government ought to what meet the basic amenities of the people, and security is one of them. And this government is not meeting it. You ought to do what is necessary. They are fighting for what for state police. How are they going? In fact, I think this government is, in fact, they are confused, they are confused, they don't know what they are doing. To say the least, they don't know what they are doing. If they know, they will meet the basic amenities of the people so the people can live peacefully. Looking at the economic crisis, you ought to provide security for them. If that's the least you can do for the people, to enjoy themselves. So that you can, in fact, you can be on the way, you can, your car can uh, break down, you leave, then you come back and meet your car the same way. But you can't do that. There are some places in Benin City you just go to, uh, Upper Sack Mobile, or, or by omission extension, you then not leave your car daybreak. Mm. If not, they will take your car, they will just throw your car away. We have always heard stories about this whole insecurity. People are always complaining every day about it, but we can't reach it time, we can't like expand shape. A particular topic has been trending for some time now that is um, the issue of Governor Obaseki and his deputy Shaibu. So, can you please let us in, like give us one or two about this whole issue? Why the old tantrums and all? Uh, Godwin Obaseki and Philip Shaibu. You see, this is politics, and they say politics in a dirty game, it's a very dirty in game. a layman's language, and they are fighting dirty. See, this is this is a child's play. Uh, have you ever heard where the sitting governor and his deputy they are in for a fight? See, it all started when the governor didn't want the deputy to purchase the nomination form. Now, Godwin Obaseki has done Philip Shaibu wrong. See, a lot of persons would not agree to that. But clearly looking at the fact that um, the governor is fighting against godfatherism, and then telling your deputy not to pick the nomination form, it's an act of what? God, for that reason. I don't think there's an issue with that. Yeah, there's a big issue. You see, uh, Philip Shaibu fought uh, Comrade Adams Ali Oshomole, which is the previous governor. Now, after fighting his predecessor because of what? God, for that reason. Now, you're bringing back God, for that reason, into the state, which is not supposed to be. How can a city governor, have you ever heard it before, that a city governor and his deputy are having issues? Now, it even went as far as uh, stopping uh, Philip Shaibu's aid, media aid, and uh, uh, the security men from entering into, uh, entering into a, a government house. Now, the next thing he did was what to stop Philip Shaibu's uh, chapel, where they do money devotions. He stopped it. 
Now, the good people of Edo State are seeing this. They are seeing this all for what? Just because Godwin Obaseki is what? Trying to project somebody. How can you fight a... Uh, you are telling us, don't do what I do, but do what I say? This is wrong. I'm this sorry, but I don't think that's an issue because, first of all, looking at the political landscape, definitely, before Obaseki came into power, we knew about this whole Shaibu trying to like also add one or two things inside. So before him t thinking of even buying the political ticket, definitely he has had this talk with Obaseki. Definitely the controversies that these people had and were not aware of. Do not forget that. Yes. So I feel firstly, first thing first is that Shaibu is trying to play a very smart game here. Now, Obaseki is your governor and then he, he made you his deputy clearly. So if he's telling you not to um, join this whole political whatever, he has a reason why. And I also believe Obaseki mainly at first will not have an issue with Shaibu becoming the governor, but there's something about humility. He's definitely not humble. Okay. That's it. Now, I, I need you to really understand this whole concept properly. You see, when uh, a governor tells you do not purchase the form, meaning he has what an agenda for it is your governor being the governor of the state and telling your deputy not to run for the state means you have an agenda for the state that is god for that is you want the uh, land you want it to what continue and it's what uh, people are fighting against zoning they want an ace and person to become the next governor of Edo state if he's capable then why not no now politics has gone more than the uh, zoning Politics in Edo State has gone more than Godfatherism. It is all about the best interest of the people. A Benin man can decide to come for this whole governorship, whatever, and it's still going to flop. But then if the Esan man, if I pronounce that correctly, if he's going to do a very good job, then why not allow him? Why do you have to say, okay, it takes a process that oh, a Benin man has ruled for a period of time, so it's time for an Esan man. But what about if he's not capable? I feel the main thing we should be looking at is people that are capable. People are going to listen to the tears of people, the cry of people. People are going to listen to the people, not about if you are from Isan or if you are from Benin. That is not of our priority. We have had a Benin governor, right? Yes. But then, to some persons, it did well, and others, it did not do well. So why don't we look mainly on someone that we know is going to work collectively for our own good? Why are we so in on this whole Isan and Benin? Now, that is the politics we have been talking about. Now, before the governor and the deputy governor had their fight, the governor must have told the deputy not to run for the elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the deputy has an ambition of which is to become the next governor of Edo State. As a governor of the state, you have to give your deputy listening ear because he did a lot for the sitting governor. If I'm not wrong clearly, he was the one who channeled the fight with the predecessor. He did a whole lot of things for this current administration to become what the governor of the state. But they both have to share one way or the other. So yes, I can't give it to one. It's a 50 50. It's a 50 50. But it's now, still, it still comes down to the same thing. You knew definitely you're going to like, um, you're going to go against your governor of Basiki. Were you expecting that the fight was going to be easy? That's not possible. He's the one in power right now. So he has a lot of, like, he has to say more than you, the deputy, trying to, like, override him. You see, this this fight between Obaseki and uh, Philip Shaibu, it is not meant to be in the media. It's supposed to be outside. Sorry, it's supposed to be in between them and resolved in between them. There is no place where you see uh, a sitting governor and the deputy having clash. I think uh, the good people of Delta State have not experienced this kind of thing. Uh, in fact, in Nigeria as a whole, I have not heard this kind of thing where you see governor and deputy fighting right. dirty. It's not supposed to be irrespective of what the deputy needs. The governor could have sat him down to tell him his reasons for it, not fighting dirty out. You see, as it is right now, it's a big shame for the people of Edo State to see the deputy and the, the governor. governor fighting dirty. It's not supposed to be. Uh, the governor and the deputy, they should kindly resolve their differences and not rub it on the people of Edo State. Now, not allowing the media people of uh, the deputy, not allowing the chapel to hold, destroying this building, stopping every other thing the deputy is supposed to do is wrong. In fact, in the primary elections that we had, the uh, deputy governor came out to say, he, the delegates came to him to say that they were not cleared 
because he's the rightful winner. These are absurd. These things they are doing is absurd. These are baby talks. We, we are more mature than this. They should settle their differences inside for the many months of they have. They should just kindly do what they ought to do and let peace reign for the people of Edo State. So it's safe to conclude that the fight between Governor Obaseki and his deputy is definitely a misplaced priority. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Ui, for giving us detailed about thank all of much. this. Thank you. So this is where we draw the curtains today on Political Insights. Please do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to share, and do not forget to like this video. I remain your host, Obishi Tracy.